sido muito massa. So are you uh, undertaining at academy? Uh, sir, I joined sir, but I came out in EOL sir. You came out? In EOL sir. EOL. Extraordinary. Okay. Extraordinary. Okay. Okay. So the reason for this extraordinary leave is that you wanted to take the next step. Yes sir. You are not satisfied with the uh, rapid service. Uh, sir, I am happy only sir, but I want to uh, give my chance. I want to take my chance and uh, aim for IAS because I feel that IAS is uh, uh, more diverse in its opportunities and uh, the interaction with the ground level people, uh, the scope for interaction is much higher. So I think that would give me a better job satisfaction. So I want to try and get into IAS. So. Okay. Recently, government uh, has in the budget Government has imposed tax on uh, digital uh, uh, gains, but at the same time, like there is a ban on uh, cryptocurrency and all that. How do you see that? Uh, sir, the the RBI had earlier imposed a ban on transactions in cryptocurrency, uh, but that ban was uh, revoked by the Supreme Court of India. It allowed uh, transactions in uh, so uh, investments in uh, cryptocurrency, but uh, it was not recognized as a legal tender till now. Uh, the government has also come up with a plan to bring about a central government bank, uh, the central bank backed uh, digital currency. Uh, so uh, as of now, it is not clear that uh, whether it is uh, 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 a legal tender or not. Yeah, so when it is not a legal tender, so in a way we are saying it is not legal tender. On the other side, we are uh, uh, saying that you have to uh, uh, remit taxes on that. So don't you find any contradiction in the policy? Uh, so I think it is only for the investments and the gains that the people get. Only that amount is taxed. As of now, it is not recognized as a legal tender. Okay. Yeah. So, you are basically from Ooty? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, tell me uh, some uh, famous monuments in Ooty. In some monuments? Uh, UNESCO recognized? Uh, sir, the Nilgiri Mountain Railway. Uh, it is a World Heritage Site. And uh, Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve itself is uh, recognized by UNESCO under the Man and Animal Biosphere Program. Okay, uh, what is the specialty of Nilgiri Mountain Railway? It works on a particular system, technology. What is it? So, it is the rack and pinion system. Hmm. Uh, it is uh, the steepest railway of Asia and the rack is, rack and pinion system is basically like a tooth system uh, where the uh, train uses it for climbing up steep hills. Okay, uh, you know that there is this uh, man-animal conflict in uh, Udhagamandala. Uh, do you have any suggestions? Sir, to solve the problem. Uh, yes sir, there are man-animal conflicts. Uh, I think uh, firstly we have to understand uh, what are the reasons for man-animal conflict because uh, uh, the plantations are very closely located to the protected zones. So for that firstly we have to go with biofencing of these uh, plantations uh, that can keep away animals like elephants uh, firstly. Secondly, we also have to uh, work with the local people to come up with, uh, to understand their indigenous knowledge and that can be leveraged and that can be used as, do's, that can be uh, 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 used for awareness creation about the do's and don'ts uh, in case of a man-animal conflict. Thirdly, we have to create, buff the buffer zones must be well maintained uh, so that the uh, animals do not come out. Uh, the proper water and food reserves must be made available inside the forest itself. Okay. Uh, so, can you name some of the tribes who occupy uh, the Uti Hills? Uh, sir, there are six uh, PVTGs, uh, namely uh, Todas, Irulas, Kotas, Kurumbas, uh, Panias and Katnayakas. Okay. So, what is the status of, uh, like, educational status of these tribes? Uh, so, certain tribes like Kotas and Thodas are uh, gaining more education, they are doing well in the literacy rates, but as a whole the tribes are not uh, that much uh, educated when compared to the uh, mainstream society. 
but there are steps being taken uh, like the ek eklavya schools have been uh, built in nilgiri uh, to cater to their education needs okay so did you undergo any sort of training in income tax so far uh, you have not okay then i will not ask you any questions on income tax so you sir was asking about uh, taxation on digital assets yes. do you know what is the tax on digital assets that was brought in by the government sir 30 percentage and there is one specific clause So Which is different from the other assets. Ah, uh, sir, I am not aware about that. Sir. Okay. So, Miss uh, Swati Shri, yes, you sir. have uh, taken agriculture as your option. Yes, sir. And you also study BSc agriculture. Yes, sir. So, tell me, how is uh, climate change going to impact agriculture, and how prepared are we? Ah, uh, sir, so climate change has both positive and negative impacts. uh the positive impact is basically because uh the carbon increase in carbon will have a fertilization effect but if we see the total impact it is negative uh, because of the increase in extreme events like floods and droughts and uh, the uh, higher temperature it affects the crops uh, by weakening the plants as well as increasing the risk of pest disease incidences and uh, soil erosion and soil salinity can also be a problem because of sea level rise uh, but if we see how india is equipped india icar has taken some initiatives called nicra which ensures climate resilience in our agriculture system uh, research is being undertaken and specific projects are being promoted under this a uh, training is being given to the uh, academics academia as well as the SG, uh, extension department uh so but we also have to work more on that we have to increase uh, the number of climate resilient varieties drought tolerant uh, flood resistant varieties and we we also have to work uh, more with the farmers to understand their needs so when you talk about uh, flood resistant varieties or uh, pest resistant varieties we need to increase that is what you said how do we do that Uh, so uh, there are many uh, steps that can be taken we can uh, go on breeding of the uh, uh, good performing varieties that is <coughs> commercially uh, viable varieties with wild uh, wild cultivars which are more resistant to climate change and we can also uh, use technologies like genetic modification to in- impart resistance in the plants let's talk about genetic modification can you elaborate on what kind of genetic modification we can we can do uh so uh, there are uh, there would be genes available in the uh, wild plants or in other species so that genes can be imparted into the uh, that is transgenic uh, what you talk about is transgenic yes is there any other way because transgenic has some problems there are there are certain issues Uh, is there any other way we can handle this have you heard about crispr cas9 technology yes sir tell us more about how it is going to have a revolutionary impact on our agriculture food security uh, sir crispr cas9 is a recent technology which which is uh, used to uh, cut those gene which is required the desired portion will be cut and that would be inserted into the crop varieties uh it is revolutionary because the uh, the precision at which the crispr cas9 technology works is much better than compared to the earlier technologies so that can be revolutionizing in agriculture so what is the impact of that uh so uh, better varieties can be developed at a very short time uh <coughs> and uh, so i'm not able to think of anything else mm-hmm. now have you heard about gene drive Sorry, gene drive that we completely we have the capacity now to completely change the whole species sir i am not aware no, about this tell us about uh, land degradation and what are the factors which is leading to land de- degradation uh so land degradation is the redu- reduction in the ability uh, of uh, in soil productivity and uh, the causes for land degradation includes deforestation uh, overgrazing is confined to agriculture land degradation uh yes sir Uh, so uh, cultivation practices like cultivating in in a slopey area across the contour uh, where uh, erosion is more prominent 
secondly, uh, indiscriminate use of fertilizers can lead to land degradation. Maybe you can broadly classify as irrigated land, farmland and rain-fed farmland. So let's focus on rain-fed farmland and uh, how it is, uh, how the climate change impact is going to degrade that and what should we do? Uh, so is it land degradation in rain? rain fed, yes. One is irrigated, that's what you're pointing out. Yes, sir. Uh, so in, uh, in rain-fed area, the soil uh, is more susceptible to erosion, soil erosion and hence uh, uh, land degradation can happen. Is the land degradation similar in peninsular India compared to the Gangetic Plain? When you talk about flood, because the impact is going to be frequent intensive flood. So is the impact going to be similar in peninsular region vis-a-vis -vis Gangetic or both are going to be the same? Uh, so I think the Gangetic Plains are more susceptible to floods uh, according to the Geological Survey of India. Uh, but floods are uh, natural events and floods have the uh, floods are important because they replenish the soil with alluvium and that improves the fertility of the soil. That happens in Gangetic Plain. Yes. But in case of peninsula rivers, is that or? So flooding? in delta regions, that is the case, sir. But if it occurs in other areas, uh, for example, in Kerala, the floods actually uh, increased soil erosion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, hello, Shwati. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. To continue where the previous panel member was asking, you mentioned about Kerala floods and you mentioned floods are natural. But the Honorable High Court of Kerala called that Kerala floods as man-made disaster. Why is that so? Uh, so it was on the backdrop that uh, several mining and quarrying activities are taking place in the Western Ghats and many of them are illegal uh, and that uh, increases the uh, that reduces the natural ability of the mountains to hold water and that uh, increases flood in the downstream. Regarding Western Ghats, have you heard of Kasturangan Panel Committee? Yes, sir. Do you know about the report? Can you tell major uh, recommendations by Kasturangan Committee report? Uh, so uh, it uh, suggested that 37 percentage of the entire Western Ghats should be uh, classified as ecologically sensitive zone and activities like uh, mining, large-scale irrigation, uh, hydropower projects, uh, thermal project, thermal power plants and other polluting industries must be completely restricted and in the rest of the areas, sustainable development activities can be promoted. So in your opinion, tell me in a simple words, what do you mean by sustainable development? Uh, so a development that ensures the needs of the present generation without uh, depriving the future generations of the resources. Why is there so much opposition for this Kasturangan committee implementation, that recommendation, implementation of the recommendations of that committee? Entire, all the states including the state of Tamil Nadu opposed in many aspects the implementation of this recommendation. Why is that so much uh, opposition? Sir, uh, there are concerns that it can affect the developmental projects and there are also concerns that uh, farmers uh, that the, who are located within the protected areas cannot carry out the agriculture as usual, uh, that is application of pesticides and all cannot be done as usual, so it can affect their produce and the mining industry is also opposing it because mining activities are being restricted. Is there any particular recommendation by Kasturangan Committee regarding agriculture in this zones? Uh, so I think it is about uh, the uh, chemical application. They also they also spoke about commercial crops. Uh, sir, I am not aware about. They were against growing of commercial crops in this agriculture in these zones. That was a major recommendation. That is why there is so much uh, opposition in the state of Kerala because they grow a lot of commercial crops. Coming to commercial crops, which is the major commercial crop being grown in Uti, where you are, your native place of Uti? Uh, so it is tea. Can you tell me some geographical conditions required to grow tea? Uh, so it is uh, suitable to grow tea in high elevated areas above, uh, so, uh, so I am not exactly aware of the height, above certain altitude and it requires uh, slopes which is well draining in nature. Okay. Have, are you aware of any variety, there are many varieties of many regions where tea is grown. Are you aware of any region where tea is grown even on a flat surface? Uh, 
ஹிஸ்டாரிக்கல் ரீசன் தட் இஸ் தி the state sphere headed the anti hindi agitations uh, even when uh, there were suggestions that uh, hindi to be made a national language there were oppositions from tamil nadu uh, stating that it can it is not uh, possible for the southern states to uh, uh, to go with the change and the hence english was made the o- english was also made the official language um, so and uh, the recent uh, uh, the recent statement made by the home minister i think uh, so i'm not exactly aware about the official statement but in uh, the state has i'll, I'll, I'll help you out in the honorable home minister said that hindi should be the link language to connect even the non hindi speaking it should be link language to connect multiple state governments and center and state governments that was his official just of his official statement uh, yes sir so i think the state has been opposing the the proposal what is your view on that state has been opposing imposition or uh, uh, like accepting hindi what is your view is it good or uh, uh, there is some change required in the policy of the state uh, sir i think uh, promotion of hindi of development of hindi is a constitutional mandate under article 351 uh but uh, pro- uh in uh, but uh, promoting hindi in such a manner i think can stir divisive politics among states that are non hindi speaking so i think we can go on a better approach wherein uh, hindi can be promoted in return for development of the regional languages so that people will feel it more uh, voluntarily we voluntarily will come forward and learn hindi and uh, hence hindi can be made a link language Uh, Mr. Arthi, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Um, so, so, have you heard about the Sendai framework? Uh, so, it is a disaster resilience framework. What sir. is the difference between the Hyago framework and Sendai framework? Sir, I am not able to recollect it. Right. Um, so, you are from Oti, right? Yes. So, Oti uh, landslides are the major issues. particularly in disaster concerns so we have been you know in history like uh, from 1860 we have a lot of landslides uh, so what may be the causes like uh, can you just tell me why it is happening in oti uh, so uh, the major cause is the uh, uh, the removal of vegetation and the developmental activities that are taking place like building of roads or unplanned buildings construction activities uh, that triggers uh, landslides and uh, when whenever there is a high rainfall landslides are happening okay uh, in connection with the uh, have you heard about this term soil bioengineering uh, sir i am exactly not aware so but i can guess i can guess uh, so soil bioengineering is uh, to uh, to engineer the soil with uh, the use of uh, vegetation uh, like trees Correct, correct. You can go on. Uh, so, uh, plant, when we plant more trees, uh, the, veget- the roots of the plant will hold the soil together and hence we can mitigate landslides. Okay. And uh, uh, again related to that, so is this uh, agriculture practices in the Libris, whether it is leading to this landslide disasters? Uh, so in certain areas like uh, old uh, tea estates it is leading to uh, landslides but mostly since the pla- practice of agriculture is on terrace cultivation uh, i don't see any landslides caused because of uh, terrace cultivation okay and uh, you are in kwaimuto right yes sir so have you heard about the seismic zonation of india map of india Uh, so uh, the zonation based on earthquakes yes why am i told under which zone so zone uh, i think it, it's under zone 2 from who or zone so i'm not exactly sure 
Okay. So, uh, what are the other other problem like you know related to earthquakes? Generally, time to time comes in news facing uh, in uh, Coimbatore. Any idea? Sir, I'm not aware about that. There is a liquefaction in places like Amman Kulam. Okay, uh, my uh, last question. So, as you know, this drought is a long term process, right? So, yes. if, if you have a prolonged uh, you know, uh, rainfall, you will have a drought. So, can you just suggest, like as an agriculture engineer, can, can you just suggest some uh, you know, mitigating measures for uh, meteorological problems? Uh, so, uh, uh, for, for droughts, uh, we can go on contingency crop planning, wherein uh, instead of the uh, existing crop, better crops can be sown that would, that would uh, tide over the drought uh, times, uh, like better, uh, better crops like that are drought resistant like millets and better varieties which are drought resistant. Uh, secondly, we can go for uh, in situ water, con water conservation rainwater harvesting within the fields itself like uh, construction of farm ponds and uh, uh, adoption of better methods like uh, uh, like construction of uh, tall buns uh, so that runoff is reduced so so as to harvest the uh, available moisture and we can also go for alternative uh, land use patterns like uh, agro silvi pastoral systems uh, integrated farming system etc India has uh, hostile nations as its neighbors. One side is Pakistan, another side is China. So, in the context of uh, recent uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict, what do you think, what can be the implications for India in such context where the international organizations have proved to be ineffective? What sort of scenarios you can think of? Uh, sir, uh, is it uh, from Pakistan and China what impact yeah. India can have? Uh, sir, uh, there is always a threat of Chinese invasion into India because we have seen earlier the Galwan clashes had happened. Uh, there also can be a two front war where Pakistan and China can come together. Uh, where you find India, like uh, do you think India is capable of hand handling such situation or what do you think like India should go next in view of this conflict, learning lessons from this conflict, what India should do to strengthen itself either internally or diplomatically? Uh, sir, uh, in case of such events, uh, India I think would be capable of uh, putting strong resistance and even uh, warding them off because we saw the Galwan clash. India was able to uh, withstand that in, in withstand that clash. And uh, sec but there are some lessons that need to be learned because we are not very uh, advanced when compared to China in terms of border infrastructure. We need to strengthen that. And uh, in terms of uh, military expenditure also, India is not spending that much on military compared to China. So we have to modernize our military. Uh, we have to at the cost of uh, our infrastructure, at the cost of uh, at the social cost of uh, removing unemployment and poverty. So that also is a priority for India. But given that we are we have already faced uh, threats from both these countries, it would be a pragmatic step to spend more on uh, military uh, com because we are spending very less when compared to China and we also can go for uh, other steps like as you mentioned diplomatic steps we are building good relations with uh, USA as well as Russia both of which are good defense partners to India we are also a part of Quad uh, which is uh, uh, in the which ensures a open in free inclusive Indo-Pacific and we also can build ties with other uh, countries, uh, especially other neighboring countries, so that we have proper buffer zones like Nepal and Bhutan. You mentioned of uh, uh, US and Russia. See, especially in view of uh, uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict, do you think we can depend on uh, US? And moreover, because of India's uh, stance, 
both russia and us are unhappy with us what do you say about that so i think that was the uh, that was a very tactful move because india could not si- have sided with either of them because both of uh, the countries are good partners to india and uh, if uh, i think that was a very tactful move because uh, siding with one country would make us more vulnerable to such invasions जेंडर इक्वालिटी Uh, ensuring women empowerment uh, tackling with poverty and uh, ensuring uh, good brotherhood within the country uh, economically uh, we have to strengthen our uh, two backbones like agriculture and industry uh, we need to reduce our fiscal deficit uh, so we need to ensure more employment generation and uh, in political front i think uh, we need to uh, go towards uh, better uh, women representation in uh, politics uh, we need to uh, improve the parliament uh, parliament uh, in terms of uh, better discussions etc and we have we also have to bring about reforms in our political uh, parties uh, bringing in inner party democracy yes sir okay thank you thank you so we can give the yes sir thank you so i think overall uh, it is uh, excellent your communication is good your confidence is good yes sir your knowledge is uh, good so clarity in expression is there so overall you were confident but in between uh, for 2 3 minutes yes sir. i found that you got little tense yes sir when perhaps you felt that uh, you are not on a strong wicket so maybe you can be little calm it is a very much normal if you don't know something and you were honest when you said on few questions that uh, you are not aware so that is uh, appreciated okay so i think uh, you are uh, well prepared if you perform like this in the interview um, it's uh, really good uh, there is no stopping for you okay. yes sir you are well prepared okay for interview like you are from your dash everything you have prepared very well regarding uti and all you have prepared really well so the thing is uh, the candidates who are attending the interview all of them will not have this much of knowledge so even if you do not know one or two questions it's not an issue because you will be better than all the other candidates so you don't worry about that you just go to the other point like regarding the question i asked about uh, the taxation on digital asset 30 percentage the clause is that you cannot set off your loss against the gains gains already made okay. usually in other capital uh, asset transactions this can be done but in digital asset this cannot be done you cannot set off your losses against the gains made that is the point so if you do not know tell them that you do not know yes, otherwise you are very good you are doing very well thank you all right uh, so uh, when we talk about agriculture when you look at future and the climate change impact and all uh, when you talk about genetic modification there is nothing but crispr because the whole yes, genetic sir. modification is all gone yes, so this is what happened in the last 10 years in the last 5 years So please try to know about how CRISPR Cas9 is going to revolutionize the whole um, genetic modifications of um, agriculture of the plants, particularly in terms of bio, you know pest resistance and uh, nutrition enhancement yield, all that put together. In fact, there is another way. They are saying that uh, we can introduce the nitrogen uh, fixation to all the plants so that the chemical fertilizer cannot be used. So there is a lot of possibilities. And it's correctly pointed out. It's a very precision-based. It's not like 
previously there was a modification where you it's, it's cumbersome and random. This is very precise. It's, it's, and also try to know more about gene drive because there's yes. ethical issue related to gene drive. Yes, ethical related to uh, this principle Cas9 is also about utilizing the. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is an issue here, so you, maybe you could read more about it because this is very important. Yes. Thank you. Sir. Uh, one thing is, uh, other panelists mentioned one thing which I observed is I'm not very sure if. Uh, you came and you sat without permission. I'm not sure if chairperson gave you the permission to sit. Okay, sir. It's one I small observation, but that will have a huge impact. Yes, sir. Be very careful. Yes, sir. As soon as you edited, you asked for permission, that's, but without permission, please don't sit. Yes, sir. You already yes, sir. Generally, they will ask you to sit. Yes, yes sir. Okay, sometime just to see you, how you exactly. conduct yourself, may not uh, ask. Then you wait or you and you ask. It could be the case, they may be talking amongst themselves, they have not even observed when you are coming. So wait until they look at you as per, I mean, they usually as the chairperson is saying, they'll never make you stand, but there's one small observation which I observed. Yes, I'll, I'll that uh, should not happen. Yes, sir. Rest all, you're confident and one thing I observed is your eye contact is very good with. And uh, one more uh, good thing is when you're answering a member, you're looking at other members also, which means you're keeping other members engaged. It's a very good point. Yes, sir. And uh, your eye contact is good, you're confident, your knowledge, you know what you know and you don't know also. I mean, which you don't know, that you know, that you don't know. That is very much important. And when you are not very sure, asking for a permission to guess, that's also good. Few things I find uh, like uh, uh, even uh, one thing is since you are from Western Ghats region, better know about this Dargi Committee yes. Report, Kasturangan Committee Report. It's better because they expect, uh, and Uti is a very popular place, so uh, the panelists will know much about Uti. So uh, they'll expect more about your local issues, yes. local knowledge. And a uh, few more opinion based questions I felt regarding this Hindi, you handled it well, see if you can polish it some more. Yes, if not, you are ready. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I think almost uh, they have covered only one point, uh, like uh, this disaster related questions. And now the collector is going to be the authority for the, it's like a chairperson for uh, India is our uh, Prime Minister, so you are the authority for your district on disaster particularly. So little more know, knowing about the Sendai framework here, yes, IPCC and all other so rest of the things are good. You can have little more uh, of this thing, as my colleague mentioned regarding Hindi, your answer could have been little better. Yes. So a little uh, frame up your views. Okay, there are few issues which are going on. One is uh, language. Another is the federalism yes, with regard to Tamil Nadu, especially regarding the role of governor, uh, neat agitation, neat legislation and all that. So since you belong to Tamil Nadu, we can expect these questions uh, uh, may be asked. Yes, so have more this thing and my suggestion is that this sort of questions which can be little controversial, middle path approach is the best. Yes, Hindi, yes. Hindi need to be promoted, but not at the cost of, at the same time, regional languages also have been recognized in our constitution. So we need, and we have a rich uh, heritage and culture in Tamil language, so we need to preserve and promote that also. Yes. So like that, so don't, not one at the cost of other. Yes. So we have to say that diplomatically, yes, both are essential, both are important, both need to be promoted. Yes. And we can also say that uh, you, you, to some extent you mentioned that like uh, imposition. See, we can say that something which is done voluntarily is more uh, sustainable rather than being imposed from outside. So we need to uh, promote Hindi uh, so that the people of Tamil Nadu, when they go out of Tamil Nadu, they get uh, opportunities. So something like that middle approach, diplomatic, in yes, controversial this thing. My this thing is unless you have, you are very, very confident don't take uh, uh, extreme stand on uh, this sort of issue. Yes. Sir. Okay. Yes, All sir. the best. Thank you. Sir. Thank All you. Sir.